Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and today I just wanted to go over two of the most missed problems from the gas law unit review questions that were on Moodle this afternoon. So let's take a look. In this problem here, it says a gas occupies 20 liters at STP. If its temperature doubles and its pressure triples, then the new volume of the gas will be blank liters. So in this problem here, it says that we have a gas that's occupying uh, 20 liters of space at STP. So in this problem here, if we take a look, we've got V1 is uh, 20 liters. And because it says STP, anytime we see STP, we know that the temperature is 273K. So T1 is going to be 273K. And whenever we see STP, we know the pressure is one atmosphere. So a gas occupies 20 liters at STP. We know the volume is 20 liters. We know the temperature is 273K, and we know the pressure is one atmosphere. It says right here, if its temperature doubles, so the temperature here is going to double. So if the temperature here is doubling, then T2 is going to be 546. How did I get 546? I took 273 and doubled it and ended up with 546. And it says right here that it's pressure triples. So if its pressure is tripling, and we start off at one atmosphere, and its pressure triples, then we should have a, uh, a second pressure here of three atmospheres. And we want to know what the new volume of this gas is going to be. Okay, so we want to know the volume in liters. All right, so if you take a look here, we've got pressure, temperature, and volume, and we've got pressure, temperature, and volume. And so this looks like it's going to be a combined gas law problem, right? Combined gas law. We're going to use the combined gas law to solve this problem. Okay, so we know the combined gas law states that P1 times V1 all over T1 equals P2 V2 all over T2. All right, if we cross multiply, we can get rid of these fractions here. And so we'll end up with P1, V1, T2 equaling P2, V2, T1. And in this problem, we're trying to find V2, right? Where the question here is to find what the new volume is going to be. So if I want to get V2 all by itself on one side of that equal sign, I'm going to have to divide both sides by P2 and T1. If I do that, P2 and T1 will cancel out from the right-hand side. And the formula that I'm going to use to solve this problem here is going to be V2 equals P1, V1, T2 all over P2, T1. And before we can just start plugging numbers into this formula, we need to make sure that the pressure units are the same, which they are. They're both in atmospheres. And we need, to do, we need to make sure that the temperature units are in Kelvin, which they are. So it looks like we can just plug these values in here. It looks like P1 is going to be 1 atm times V1, which is going to be 20 liters, times T2, which is going to be 546K. And then we're going to divide this by P2, which is three atmospheres, times T1, which is going to be 273K. And what I like to do is put everything in the denominator in parentheses. So we'll get our calculator out. We'll take 1 times 20 times 546. And we're going to divide this by 3 times 273 and I end up with 13.333 if we round to the thousands place. Alright so the answer here I'll put down here is going to be 13.333 what? Well if we take a look ATM cancels out we have Kelvin canceling out leaving us with liters so the final volume of this gas is going to end up 13.33 liters. Let's take a look at another problem. In this problem here it says an aerosol can is at a pressure of 9.2 atmospheres at a temperature of 37.5 degrees Celsius. We want to know, uh, let's read, it says it is then placed in a fire and the pressure rises to this 
right here at 26.3 atmospheres. We want to know the temperature of the fire in degrees Celsius. So in this problem here, let's take a look. We have a can, uh, an aerosol can, and inside of this can there is a gas that's exerting this pressure right here. So that is going to be P1 at this temperature right here. That is going to be T1. It is then placed in a fire and so the temperature is going to increase uh, and so the pressure will also increase according to Gayla Sachs law so this here is the new pressure and we want to find the new temperature alright so we're asked to find T2 in this problem here so this looks like a Gayla Sachs pro uh, law problem this is a Gayla Sachs law we've got pressure and temperature right we know that the pressure and temperature of a gas are directly proportional. If the uh, temperature of the gas is increasing, then the pressure of the gas will increase as well. So in this problem here, we know that P1 is 9.2 atmospheres. We know that, uh, let's see here, T1 is going to be 37.5 degrees Celsius. And we're going to have to convert this to Kelvin. So we add 273 to this and we will end up with 310.5 okay so there is T1 uh, let's see here we know P2 the pressure is increasing to 26.3 atmospheres and last but not least we need to find T2 and we need to find it in degrees Celsius alright so in this problem here uh, we know that Gayla Sachs law states that P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And if we cross multiply, we'll end up with P1 T2 equaling P2 T1. And we're asked to find T2 in this problem here. So we have to divide both sides by P1. These will cancel out. And so we finally end up with the formula that we're going to use to solve this problem. So what is P2 in this problem? 26.3 atmospheres. What is T1 in this problem? If we take a look, T1 is going to be 310.5. And we're going to end up dividing this by P1. P1 in this problem is 9.2 atm. We'll continue this up here, I'm running out of room. And so I take 26.3 times 310.5 divided by 9.2, and we'll end up with 887.625. Let's see here, what unit are we going to attach here? This is Kelvin. Okay, so we just found T2. It's 887.625 Kelvin. This is not our final answer though, because if you take a look, the question here wants you to put the answer in degrees Celsius. So how do you convert the Kelvin to degrees Celsius? We subtract 273. We'll continue this up here. We're going to subtract 273 from this, and we should end up with our final answer. T2 is going to equal 614.625 degrees Celsius. Okay, so keep in mind when you're doing this problem in the uh, review that these numbers right here are going to be random. They're going to be different for every single one of you and therefore the answer is going to be different. So don't just plug this number into the answer box and, and hope that it's going to be right because it won't. But uh, pay attention to the steps that we just did and uh, you should get the right answer. So those were two of the most missed problems from the review questions this afternoon and I hope you found this helpful.